Welcome to Envisioned Broadcasting. Envisioned Broadcasting. The station designed to encourage, equip, and empower you for growth and success. An affiliate of Direct Impact Broadcasting and Creative Broadcasting. Presenting the Empower Hour with Jerisha. A show that shares the stories behind the journeys of leaders, influencers, and motivators. The Empower Hour with Jerisha begins now. Welcome to the first show of Power Hour with I am your host, Teresa Moore. I am a best-selling author with over 18 years of combined experience in education, finance, healthcare, business management, and development. Owner and founder of Empower on Purpose, where we provide personal and professional coaching and consulting services. Certified coach, speaker, and trainer with the John Maxwell team and owner of Envision Broadcasting Radio Station. Before I introduce my amazing guest and friend, I am excited to announce Life Builder's personal development with Jason Hill, along with my business, Empower on Purpose, are partnering up as John Maxwell coaches, speakers, and trainers to bring a Youth Empowerment Day this Saturday, May 4th, from 12 to 4, to the Fairborn, Ohio area, at Tri-County Youth and Family Center. The event is free for youth ages 8 to 18. Details can be found on Empower on Purpose Facebook business page. Also, I want to say a special thank you to my media mentors, Tawana Wilson and Ashley Little. So each week, I will share an empowerment quote to empower you to be your best self. Today's empowerment quote is by Oprah Winfrey, and it simply states, surround yourself with only people who are going to lift you higher. Without further delay, today my special guest and friend is Angela E. Stevenson. Angela is an author, playwright, radio personality, entrepreneur, and business coach. Who says that you can't start from nothing and suddenly end up with everything? Angela E. Stevenson, the mother of four, speaks from experience having once lived in a homeless shelter, a survivor of domestic and sexual abuse, she is living proof that if you keep God first and persevere through the roaring seas of life, that you can live the life that you are purposed for. In addition to being a certified John Maxwell coach, speaker, and trainer, she is also an author of the best-selling book, Misery, Mess, and Miracles. The CEO of AES Productions, a company that has produced several hit stage plays such as Misery, Mess, and Miracles, and Can You Love Me Now? Angela is also the conference host of Soap Encounter, Successfully Overcome All Pain. This conference is designed to assist individuals in how to overcome the painful areas in their lives and to live a life of wholeness and purpose. Her compelling story is one to encourage, empower, and esteem others to rise above life's obstacles and live a purposeful life. Her favorite quote is, when life is full of misery and you are a mess, there is still room for a miracle. Welcome, my friend, fellow day and tear, and an awesome woman of God. Angela, welcome to the show. It's such a pleasure to have you on my first show. How are you this evening? Thank you so much, Jerisha. It's my pleasure to be with you tonight on your first show. So congratulations to you. Um, and just thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I would love for you to share with the listeners about your journey and background and how you came to do all of the amazing things that you're doing now. How long do we have, Teresa? <laughs> <laughs> so um, let me just start here. Just let me say uh, my journey began actually when I decided to just take control of my life. For years, I was a victim of sexual and emotional abuse, of course, and even domestic violence. And with living that life or just experiencing those things in life, I realized that even though I was victimized, that I was also playing the role of the victim because I was using my experience um, as an excuse for everything that I was not doing that I should have been doing. Um, I was using that as an excuse to just be the person that I was for being, you know, lashing out at people, just being angry, uh, being negative. 
uh, being lazy, not even doing the things that I know that I should do because I was just, used, oh, if this hadn't happened to me, then I would be better off. Or if this person hadn't abused me, you know, I'd be more successful. And one day God just said to me, how much longer are you going to remain the victim? And how much longer are you going to use that as an excuse not to move forward in life? And sometimes, you know, with dealing with painful things, we don't really realize how stagnant we are and how we use the, allow the pain, rather, to just keep us stagnant and complacent and not move forward. So I began this journey of healing and self-identity and self-awareness. Just wanted to know who I was because, you know, when you experience pain, oftentimes you, you're really not you. You know, you're just caught up in the past and not really enjoying the present, um, not ready for the future, of course. But so it's my journey, you know, becoming whole myself and going through this walk of healing and asking God to heal me and heal all the broken places. While doing that, God dropped the vision of SOAP Encounter um, into my spirit, gave me the vision, which that acronym stands, again, for Successfully Overcoming All Pain, realizing that I was not the only one who experienced pain and hurt and heartache um, throughout life and that we're still stuck there. So I wanted to reach back as God has helped me to overcome so many obstacles in my life, and he's allowed me to heal and be successful and do some of the things that I'm doing today that I wanted to reach back and help others who are stuck. Um, the pain doesn't always have to be emotional. It could be spiritual. It could even be financial. Uh, but a lot of times, most times it is emotional, stemming from something that's happened in our past. So I want to reach back and help others uh, overcome. So they can live a life of purpose because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to help others, you know, and that's, that was, that's part of my journey. That's what I'm doing now. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is so awesome. I think it is so important, as you mentioned, you know, when we go through those painful experiences in our life to be able to use those experiences to help others, to help bring them through that pain, to help them on their own journey of healing. Absolutely. I commend you for, yeah. you know, creating that soap encounter so as a best-selling author, playwright, and CEO of AES Productions, share, can you share just a little bit more as far as what truly inspired you to write Misery, Mess, and Miracles and create that conference, The Soap Encounter? Yes. Well, with the book Misery, Mess, and Miracles, actually, um, I always wanted to be an author. I always said I wanted to write a book. Didn't really know that it was going to be my story per se, but as a little girl, as growing up, I always I was an avid reader, read all the time. So I always thought I wanted to write a book, but didn't know that it was going to end up being part of my own personal experience. But Misery, Mess, and Miracles really was part of my healing process. I began to journal and just write down some things that I had experienced in life. It's, you know, just sometimes you have to just write out some things that you haven't said to someone else, and you just like, I can journal it, I can write about it. Um, and I, actually, that, that's an exercise that I, I have people do sometimes with coaching. But just write out your thoughts. So in doing that, the book just kind of came together because I was dealing with some areas that are still were sensitive to me, but I was able to write it out. And as I'm looking at a lot of my notes, I'm just like, wow, this is like my life. I could use this in a book. Um, so I wrote Missy Mess and Miracles, but again, it was part of my healing process. It's a fictional story, but it does have a lot of my life experience poured into it. Uh, the character, main character is Yolanda, and it depicts her story as she's a, a PK's kid. She's a, a pastor's child. So uh, some of the things that she went through, she was given up at birth. She was a, ended up being adopted into this home, but even through her childhood, she dealt with um, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, uh, teen pregnancy. Um, so if you can imagine her being a pastor's kid or a preacher's kid, and she's pregnant, you know, not married, mm -hmm. uh, the ridicule, the shame that she went through with that. Mm -hmm. Then later on in life, she gets married, she goes through a divorce. She loses not one but two kids. And so her story just goes, seems like the heartbreak um, just continues on and on. She's like, she just can't get a break mm -hmm. in life. But it just talks about how eventually she comes to herself, um, knowing that God is always with you and how he rescued her and pulled her out of all this shame and this guilt and pain and how she walked through her healing and living a life of purpose. Um, so it, it just it deals with a lot. Anyone who has dealt with pain in their life, you need to read Misery, Mess, and Miracles. It's uh, not just because I wrote it, but it's a phenomenal story. But it does show that no matter how deep you are and whatever it is that you're in, how broken you are, 
how hurt you are, even the guilt that you the guilt that you carry or some things that you've done your own self that mm-hmm. you can come out of it, which is where my favorite um uh, quote comes from that when life is full of misery and you are a mess that there's still room for a miracle because that's that gives God the perfect opportunity to do what he does you know because we can't absolutely. do it on our own absolutely absolutely and then the conference the soap encounter can you give us a little more details as far as the inspiration behind that and yes the inspiration behind yes the inspiration behind the soap encounter was mentioned that God gave me that vision uh, when I was going through my healing process. But I realized that even growing up in the church, there's a lot of hurt people in and outside of the church. So I don't want to just put that stigma on the church that they're just inside the church. But throughout life, you meet people. You may work with them. You may go to church with them. They may be your neighbor, your friend, what have you. There are a lot of hurting people. And, again, I wanted to help people overcome the pain. That's I believe that's what I'm called to do is to help people overcome. So I was asking God, okay, I had the vision, but how do I put this together? Of course, it's a conference, and it seems like everybody's doing a conference. So I sat on it for like two years. Like I don't want to do it because everybody's doing a conference. I don't want to be like everybody else. But my conference is Mm -hmm. different. So the conference itself is designed to help people spiritually and connect them. It really brings faith-based and mental health together. Because I believe the two uh, is together is very powerful. It's impactful. We need it. We I believe in God, uh, so I be, and I know that God is the one who helped me. But as, along with that, through prayer, and I still had to seek out counseling, and that is how I derived at my place of healing. I had to use both mm. church prayer, my faith, and counseling. So it kind of connects the two, and it's a platform. We bring in um, different speakers. We bring in counselors, licensed counselors and coaches um, throughout the United States um, to just help empower people and give them the the tools and the knowledge that they need to overcome these painful areas in their life. Absolutely. I think that's so awesome. And I just want to point out that I absolutely love how when you say the soap encounter experience, you know, you mentioned that it's real, it's relevant, it's relatable, it's real life. I think that's amazing. Yes, yes, yes it is. And that's where we are. Yes, sometimes we talk above people's heads and we cover up things because it's like taboo. I don't want to talk about that. But we are dealing with a lot of things. Uh, we're dealing with so many things that we keep hidden and we don't share sometimes because we're fearful that, you know, I'm going to be looked at, you know, with the side eye or I feel like I'm the only one who's going through this. And therefore, that leads us to be depressed because, like, I can't talk about it because I'm shamed, you know. So Soap Encounter is that safe platform, that safe place where we're able to talk about some real and relatable things that people are experiencing in life. And I think that's so important, you know, not just, as you mentioned, in the church, but, you know, outside of the church because the reality is that people are going through so much pain and they're not talking about it. You know, people are going through, you know, having their own mental health issues, and they're not talking about yeah. it. So, like, especially in the church. So I absolutely exactly. commend you for, you know, creating yeah. that conference yeah. and being able to provide that that platform to help so many people and then also bringing in additional, um, you know, speakers to, to kind of speak o- along the, the pain lines and of how they can truly help help others. Yes. So if, so yes. if you could give one and so if you can give one piece of advice to an aspiring playwright, what would that be? Huh. I would say to think outside the box and don't be afraid to write about something uncommon but relevant. And I say that because within the play world that we see a lot of plays that hit the stage that are phenomenal, some great and phenomenal plays, but a lot of them deal with the typical uh relationship, he hurt me, you know, type mm-hmm. thing, the heartbreak. But there's a lot of other things that are going on in life that people are experiencing, such such as like homosexuality, there's homelessness going around. And, you know, there's everywhere you go, in any city, or any state that you go in, you will see homeless, homelessness uh, around. People are dealing with depression. So think outside the box and write about something that uncommon but it's relatable something that people are dealing with and if you just look within your immediate circle and your family or amongst your friends 
you'll see or you'll find, be able to find a subject matter that you can take and um, develop into a play. If you add just a little bit of humor to any serious subject, you could have a hit play um, because people like to deal with and they like to see um, things that they can, they, they, excuse me, that they can relate to, but they'll get bored easily with subjects that they have already seen, almost typical like, oh, if you start reading a book and you're like, oh, I already know how this is going to end, and then you put it down. Mm -hmm. Same thing in the play world. You know, like, oh, I already know how this is going <laughs> to end, so I may or may not go. But something relatable, you're like, oh, wow, okay, I want to go hear what they're saying. I want to see what's going on with that. So that would be my best advice is don't be afraid to think outside the box and write about something uncommon but that was yet relatable to people. Absolutely. And Angela, I have to ask this question. So um, when you think of some of the women playwrights, do you feel like it's more of a challenge or it could be more challenging for women that are trying to get into the industry? Um, oh, that's a great question. I think that it is, yes, I think it is a little bit more challenging because as you look throughout, there's a lot of, I could just use um, the city of Atlanta, there's a lot of female playwrights here in the city, but when you look nationally, um, it's a male-dominated um, field. So it is, I think, a little bit more challenging. And actually one of my goals uh, I aspire is to be uh, nationally known as a playwright, a first uh, African-American uh, female playwright. So um, that is something that I'm aspiring towards because I think it's needed uh, we need those role models for people who are coming behind us, who may have uh, stories that they're inspired to write um, or become a playwright, and if they see us in those roles, then that will give them the encouragement and inspiration to continue on. But, yes, I think it is a little bit more challenging for us. Absolutely. I think, you know, definitely um, I think that's awesome that you're actually going for the National African American um, Playwright um, I look forward to either, you know, supporting you in those those efforts or, or you know, hearing more about about um, you being a national African-American playwright. I think that's absolutely awesome and such, you know, a, a great accomplishment to shoot for as far as a goal. Um, so as a visionary, yes, thank you. as a visionary, uh, as a visionary leader and influencer, I know that you have had many wins and successes. But with wins and successes often comes challenges and obstacles. Can you share with some of the listeners um, how you've had some hurdles and, and the hurdles that you faced and how you've overcame them? Ooh, yes. <laughs> There's been many. I think one of the major ones, the, well, I'm going to say one of the major ones that I've experienced is rejection. You know, you you have this vision and you're all excited, and then when you share it with someone, and they'll just be like, "Oh, okay," and you just like they rain on your parade almost. So you you or, or you can go and you'll share it with someone, and they'll be like, "I don't know how that's gonna work," or you ask them to invest or support you, and they're like, mm, "I don't see it," so they won't invest. Or it could be a friend or family member that you are sharing your vision with or your idea with. And, again, they're rejecting it. And sometimes it's not like even I experienced this with writing my story, um, writing the book, Missy Mess and Miracles. There were some who were like, oh, I don't think you should tell that. You know, are you sure you want to expose that? And mm -hmm. the rejection sometimes, if you listen to it, if you play into it, it will cause you to stop and think, be like, well, do I? Or maybe I shouldn't, you know. So that is one of the obstacles that I had to to get over, being that I dealt with rejection throughout my life. So especially when you have a vision that you're trying to fulfill and you know that it's God-ordained and you're passionate about it, that you have to get over the rejection and realize that everyone is not going to come on board. Everyone is not going to see your vision and understand it because, first of all, God didn't give it to them. He gave it to you. So even if they don't understand or they don't buy into it, that you have to keep moving forward. So I had to get over that. I had to learn that that it was far bigger than me, myself, and that I, I was passionate about it, and I believed in it. So, and that's another, that's a point that I, I like to tell people, that if you believe in whatever it is that you're doing, it doesn't matter if no one else has come on board, um, move forward. Because as you're moving forward, if God gave you the vision, 
he's going to sustain it, he's going to support it, and he's going to send the people who will esteem you, who will support you, and who will buy into it, and who will invest in your vision. Um, I know that from experience. I've, I've seen it firsthand. It's happened to me. Those who I thought would support me, that actually actually turned away, that actually rejected me, but a lot of people who supported me were people who I did not know. Mm -hmm. They just saw what I was doing and was interested. Not to say no one that I know in my inner circle supported, but a lot of people who I thought would support me did not. So you can't let that deter you. You have to keep moving forward. I completely agree. I think it's, you know, you've said some really important, um, you know, statements that, you know, when you have that vision, everyone's not going to support your dream. Everyone's not going to support that vision. And it's so important just to keep moving forward. You know, I can speak from, you know, when I launched my uh, my own business, and I really thought I was going to have so many people backing me on it. And there, mm -hmm. the people I thought was going to back me, they were just as negative as negative could be. And so that could be so <laughs> discouraging. So discouraging. Yes, it can, you know, it can be. really make you feel like, well, can't, are you truly, is this truly your vision? You know, it makes you question so many different things. You know, exactly. what's going on? Absolutely. It makes you question everything. It makes you question your vision. It makes you question your dream. And I have to realize the same thing is that this is, this is where God has me for a reason. And, mm -hmm. you know, my goal is to move forward, and I'm going to just keep moving forward. And oftentimes that means you may have to, you know, cut ties with some people that are going to feed you that negative, that negativity. So I definitely, That's you know, true. understand that. Absolutely. Um, so I want to go, I want to take a second to kind of share how we actually um, connected. Um, and it's been, what, about a month or two now since we kind of since yes. we connected before the conference. <laughs> and, I, you know, I have to share this because I really felt like, you know, we were both excited about, you know, attending the John Maxwell conference. And so we connected well, beforehand. Definitely. And, you know, once we got there and met, I honestly felt like we've known each other for, <laughs> for years. Um, just to go <laughs> right, through right. some of the conference and, you know, hear some of the, the speakers, it was absolutely amazing. And so, you know, as a Don Maxwell coach, trainer, and speaker, you know, I would love for you to share some of the work that you're doing to encourage others to rise above life's obstacles and live a purposeful life. It's great that you brought that up because I was actually thinking about that as well. Like, Jerisha and I, act like, we have been uh, friends forever. <laughs> and it was funny because I had plans, I think both of us did, to, to connect with some other people that we knew that were going to be there at the event, and we never did um, because we were just together all the time. And I think I reached out to one person. It's like, well, I have this going on. And so we never did connect. But it was like something, I mean, it's, I think it was God ordained. It was just all a set up. God set us up uh, for a purpose. I believe. So did not know that at the event that I would be your first guest on your radio show. That was a vision I did we didn't get to talk about. So you know, you just never know why God brings people in, you know, to each other's life. And I was so excited, as you mentioned, about the John Maxwell certification. And when I finally got to IMS, I was just like Oh my gosh! This has been a long, it's been a year's journey. Actually, for me, it had been a year's journey of, of completing mm -hmm. the course and doing the modules and things of that nature. So I was very excited. And so a lot of the tools, I was trying to explain this to someone else um, that asked me about the course, uh, taking it. Your know, course, I, I recommend it to anyone who's listening. That um, if you want to build uh, your coaching or training business that John Maxwell is a great course to take, to invest in. It is an investment. I, I, mm -hmm. I support it 100%. So it has helped me greatly throughout my life um, since I've been in the program. And some of the things that I'm using right now, I'm doing mastermind courses. I do them on Mondays. I'm actually finishing up one next Monday. It's a four-week course. Um, we did Mirror, Mirror, um, Finding the Value Within Yourself, which has been going really great. And so I'm doing that, and that, again, that helps people to build their self-esteem. So mirror, mirror, finding the value within yourself is dealing a lot with self-esteem. How do you rate yourself? How do you see yourself? What value have you attached to yourself? And I was so nervous when I did the first one, like, oh, is anybody going to sign up? Anybody going to join? Um, but it's been great. A lot of people signed up, 
and I ended up having to cancel last week due to a family emergency, and I'm getting inbox. I was getting inboxes like, "Did I miss the call? What happened? <laughs> when did I finish?" So people like to be empowered. You know, I've yeah. learned that with coaching. And they like to learn about themselves, and they want to be better. They want to, you know, become better people. So when you have someone that, first of all, first you can relate to some of the things that they've dealt with in life, then they're going to listen to you. So I enjoy the coaching aspect of it. Of course, I'm a trainer uh, in my everyday life, in my field, in my career. So even with the John Maxwell program, it helps me in my everyday nine-to-five job um, with training as well. So um, that is something that I'm doing, of course, is assisting me with Soap Encounter with the conference itself because I'm empowered now, and I want to do things right. You know, sometimes you will have information or you have knowledge. Let me say that. You have knowledge and you have experience, but how to apply it, how to use it is what the John Maxwell program has helped help me do. So with that, it just really helps me with coaching and doing the mastermind courses um, that I'm now doing. And of course, you know, later on, we want to move into some doing some leadership um, coaching as well. We're certified to do the behavior health analysis, which um, I have someone that I spoke with just recently that is going to be doing that. So I'm just Going to be doing a whole lot of things. Look out for me, Angelique Stevens is going to be yes. doing is on the move. <laughs> with the, definitely with the coaching. Yes, absolutely. It's you know, I have been a part of the John Maxwell team for um, it's been over a year now, and I'll tell you that yes. when I started the first mastermind, I you know I was like, okay, you know, I want to add value. I want to add value, but I had no idea how much. I would be able to learn from other people as well. It's just has truly been an amazing experience oh, with, you know, yeah. with the people that you encounter, you know, um, with the classes, you know, with the conferences and all of that. So it's truly been an amazing experience. And I definitely can, you know, say that, you know, from the day that I got, that probably you can speak to this too, from the day that I got back from the conference, I have absolutely been on fire. You know, <laughs> there was so much. Yes, I was just so, so excited. Much. I couldn't wait to get back. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get back and start implementing the tools and like, okay, when are I going to be able to go to the next one? Of course, the next one is in August and I won't be able to go because the soap encounter is in August. So I was just like, okay, well, I guess March would be it. I'll be going back in March. But, yes, it was just – you can't explain it. You just have to be there. Uh, and we're not exaggerating. Like, okay, they just, you know, promoting John Maxwell. That, we're not being paid to, to say anything about John Maxwell. That's right. <laughs> this is our true experience. You just have to go and experience it for yourself. It, it's phenomenal. It, it's phenomenal. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing. I have to agree with you 100%. Um, so if you can share, what is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? What was it like before you learned it? And then what was life like after learning it? There's a couple, but I would have to say it's not to put too much weight on what people think. Mm -hmm. And I say that for me is because growing up, it was always being a, a pastor's kid, image was everything. Uh, how people looked at you, you couldn't do certain things because people would be like, okay, that's a preacher's kid, you know. So there's a lot of weight on image of what you did. You had to carry yourself a certain way. And then so if you made the wrong move, like what are people going to think if I do this? Uh, what are they going to say? So growing up, that was in my head. You know, you got to do these things this way so you won't bring shame on your name because um, that was that – was, also big. I mean, the Bible talks about having a good name. It's great. We should. But my parents taught that to me as well. So I was always very careful and cautious about some of the things that I did. But growing up also into my adult life, it just carried over. And I realized that I was thinking more about what people thought of me than more so than what God thought about me. Um, and being true to my true self, you know, to what I really thought and what I really desired, my decisions were made based on people. So if someone said, oh, I don't think you should do that, more than, most likely I wouldn't do it. Um, or it is like, oh, that's probably not going to go over well because they're going to see you in this light. I probably wouldn't do it. So I had to get over that and just know that, you can't please everybody. I was a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. that, there we go. I was a people pleaser. 
So I want to please people. Um, having dealt with rejection, and I'm going to tie that in because it's so true, having dealt mm-hmm. with rejection because I was given up at birth, so I was adopted, as I mentioned earlier. So growing up, even though I had loving parents, loving family, um, I believe that my my birth mom, her giving me up was God-ordained. It was purpose. It had to happen. Um, mm-hmm. But as a child, I dealt with rejection, and that stemmed over into my adult life as well. So I became a people pleaser because I wanted people to accept me, and if they accepted me, I didn't have to worry in my mind about them leaving me or rejecting me or abandoning me. So I became this people pleaser. And as I was in my journey of healing, that was one of the things that came to light for me is that you have to stop being a people pleaser and you have to do live your life according to the word of God, first of all. And it's okay mm-hmm. to go against the grain of what people are saying because you can't please everyone. You know, you're trying to please this person, but the person on the right is not going to like what you're doing. If you try to please the person on the right, then the person in front of you is, is going to be unhappy. So you can never please people. So don't put too much weight on what people think. Um, pray about it. Seek God and follow your heart's desire. And if you're at peace about what you're doing, then that's the right thing that you're supposed to be doing. Absolutely. That is so true. You know, you have to be at peace with it. Um, that is so important. I think those are really great lessons. You know, don't put don't put too much weight on what other people think. You know, you have to be yes. to yourself. Absolutely. You do. That's, you do. Yes, absolutely. Everyone wants to be liked. We all want to be liked, you know, um, and we want to get the pats on the back, you know, to be applauded. That's just part of our human nature. But you can't live your life according to other people's lives no. or their, their wishes and their desires. You can't. You will be tossed to and fro throughout life <laughs> if you do, yeah. if you do that, yeah. Absolutely, because the reality is that, you know, people want to be celebrated, but I think we yes. have a tendency to want other people to celebrate us more than when we actually celebrate ourselves. And so, you know, I I definitely agree with that. You know, we need to have that mindset to celebrate your wins, celebrate your, you know, your wins, no matter how big or small, and stay true to yourself. So the empowerment quote that that I mentioned for today was surround yourself with only people who are going to lift you up higher by Oprah Winfrey. Can you share with the listeners any insights or advice that would align with this quote that could help empower them? Well, I think that quote is true um, all by itself. Um, And the reason I say that is like birds of a feather flock together, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you are around negative people, then you're going to become negative, you know. If you're around positive people, then you'll become positive people. If you are around wealthy people, more than likely you are going to become wealthy one day because you're going to start learning their techniques. You're going to start mimicking and doing the things that they are doing. But people who uplift you, who esteem you, um, of course, then you should, in return, it's going to lead you to esteem other people. So you want to be around people who are going to uplift you. A lot of times people who, who are uplifting you also can challenge you. And if you're being challenged to do something different than what you are, then you grow. You know, but if you're around people who are on the same level as you, there's no challenge there. There's no growth there. Uh, so you want to be around people who are going to uplift you because that means that they have taken interest in what you're doing. Uh, they believe in your vision. They believe in you, and they see something in you. You may not have arrived yet. You may just be beginning, but it's important to have people to uplift you because there are going to be days when you are discouraged when you're just Mm -hmm. not feeling like, okay, I'm putting my best foot forward, but there's no movement, there's no traction. You need uplifters in your life. You need those people who will encourage you and say, no, no, you can't stop. You got to keep going. Um, Your uplifter, or it could be a mentor, someone that's mentoring you, but definitely I agree with that quote. You need people in your life who are going to uplift you, to keep you encouraged. And to support you, that is something, again, as I mentioned, it's not always that they are, you know, they're financing your vision, they're investing their money or their time, but sometimes just an encouraging word, 
would change the whole your whole mood. It can do so much. It brings so much value to you because maybe that's what you need um, at the time. I have people in my life who just call me sometimes like, hey, I just want to encourage you. Just keep doing what mm-hmm. you're doing. I believe in you. And that fuels me. That encourages me. Um, sometimes people are uplifted and they don't know that they are. I got an email mm-hmm. not too long ago from a young lady. And she said, I just want you to know that you're my shero, and I watch you, and you don't even know it. And that just, like, wow. what? I could not believe it. And that just was uplifting for me mm-hmm. to keep going and keep doing what I'm doing because you never know who's watching and who you are affecting. So there are people, there are known uplifters, as I say, and then there are people who are hidden who are uplifting you, and they'll just tell you. Um, and they didn't, I don't think she even knew that she was uplifting me, but it was. That was an encouraging word for me. But she just wanted me to know that I was affecting her life um, and that she was watching what I was doing and I was helping her. And I didn't even know that. I really didn't. So that really encouraged me. So definitely keep people in your life who are going to uplift you. And shy away from the negative people, you know. Yes. They're, going all, they're going to always be there, you know. Absolutely. Um, but, yes. Surround yourself with people who are going to encourage you and keep you uplifted. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that what you said as far as the mentor, I think having a mentor is so important in the different areas of your life because if you have that mentor, they are going to be one that's going to encourage you. You know, you can go to them with questions about different things. And, you know, they normally are at a place to where, you know, maybe they may be an an expert in, you know, some kind of field, and then you're able to reach out to them and, you know, ask questions and get that encouraging because the reality is, like you mentioned, we all go through those moments where we're feeling discouraged, where we're ready to really pretty much throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to be able to, you know, turn to someone to get that encouragement, to feel empowered. So I think that is, you know, extremely important. It is because, you know what, and you just said something, because we can have, like we're looked at as, I have someone that I mentor. And then, Mm -hmm. but I have, someone who mentors me. Um, yes. Your mentor does not have to be uh, of the same age range. Like you said, it could be in a different field that you are striving to or they have the knowledge and they can be your mentor. I have a mentor who is actually younger than me, but they give me great advice. And sometimes I don't want to hear it. I have to be honest. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I, I'm not doing that. But when I sit back and I think about what they're saying to me, like, okay, it makes sense. Okay, you need, and especially when I look at where they are, okay, I need to pay attention to what That's the right. person I need to take saying notes. to me. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Even though it's painful at the time to hear it, like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't want to hear that. That's not me. Okay, but let me see, because this is where they are, and this is how Mm -hmm. they're telling you you need to do, so you might need to take note, you know. Absolutely. So, yes, we have mentors. We need to, everyone needs a mentor. I don't care where you are in life, how great you are, everyone needs a mentor, you know, because we haven't arrived yet. We're still striving. We're striving to get there. That's (laughs) right. Jake has a mentor, you know what I'm saying? That's right. Oprah, Nicole, Tyler Perry. You, they have mentors, yes. you know, and Tyler Perry mentors, so they're passing it on. So we all need mentors in life. Absolutely. Like you said, no matter, you know, what, where you're at in life, no matter how successful you may be, it's so important to have a mentor. I completely That's agree. True. And, and I also want to point out, because you mentioned, you know, with having people to just reach out and say, oh, they're inspired and, um, you know, that you encourage them and not even knowing. I think that happens so often. Um, you know, recently I had someone send me a card just out of the blue and just, you know, really speak life into how I have, you know, empowered them with some of the information Mm -hmm. that I put on, you know, social media and all that. And you just never know who you're going to reach. You never know who you're going to touch based off of your story, based off of, you know, what you may put on social media. And so, you know, I think that's, you know, extremely important as well. So I would love for you to share um, with the listeners, what is coming up on the horizon for you? Well, I think I've touched on it already, but we'll just reiterate that um, so August 8th through the 10th um, is the Soap Encounter 2019. I am very excited about Soap Encounter um, this year because the theme is um, reality show. Life is not a reality, rather. So, of course, not 
came up with that theme as I was in prayer and thought about like what we're going to do this year. A lot of people watch reality shows. We watch reality TV. And mm-hmm. sometimes we get confused and think reality TV is realistic. That is life. You know, uh, we can relate to some of the things that we see, but with doing that, um, life itself is not a reality show. It's reality. This is what I'm living out you know, in real life, it's not scripted, you know. Uh, so the mm-hmm. theme, again, I'm sorry, is it unscripted reality. This is not scripted. It's not something someone's written and say, this is what you say on TV. This is how we're going to act it out. Um, but this is real life. This pain, this situation that I'm dealing with, this is real. So we're dealing with um, some of those topics um, this year, unscripted reality, just some things. And every subject matter has, um, a TV or reality show uh, theme to it. So we're doing War Room, which I don't know if everyone has seen that movie, War Room, but that deals with prayer mm-hmm. because that's um, prayer is our weapon. We are doing, there's actually a subject matter called Unscripted Reality. Um, Edward Long, Bishop Long, um, the late Bishop Long's son is coming because, of course, with his his story and and the legacy, the story with his father and the life living with his father, that was almost like a, a reality show. You know, his he lived his life um, in the public eye, so to speak, because his father is very well known. So he's coming to talk about, um, you know, just unscripted reality. This is life. So some things you see on TV, some things you heard or whatever, but this is life. This is my life and just some of those things. Uh, what other great topics do we have? I have, um, oh, this one's going to be really good. Love After Lockup or Life After mm. Lockup. There is a young man, there's a show called Love After Lockup. And it talks about this life uh, and their love life after they have been in prison. So I have this young man that is coming that I think he did about 15 years in prison. So he's going to be talking about his life in prison as well as um, his life outside of prison and how he um, ended up getting married. Um, later was called into the ministry, but I, I just can't wait to hear for him to share his story. I know a little bit about it, um, but he's going to be coming. So we also have, um, it's not divorce court. We're doing, I have a judge that is coming, um, law and order. That's the subject matter. Mm, yes. <laughs> So I'm excited about um, Soap Encounter. So we're going to talk about some issues that people just deal with, you know, issues with the law, you know, um, and what are the laws because we don't know certain laws and rights that we have. Um, so we're going to talk about that and how to deal with those issues if you have them, who do you need, who do you need to talk to, uh, what are your rights, things of that nature. So we have someone that's coming through identity crisis, um, breaking bad, how to break bad habits that we have in life or just mm-hmm. break away from bad things that are in our life. So those are some of the subject matters um, that we're dealing with and so much more. And then, of course, on that Saturday night is a play by AES Productions, yours truly, um, Decisions, Lies, and Consequences. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to miss this. Now, the play is part of the conference, so there's one registration fee for that. But if you want to come to the play separately just on that Saturday night, you can. But the play itself, uh, I don't want to give it away. <laughs> but <laughs> you can be there. You can be on the seat. But it deals with um, pretty much that the decisions that we make in life, there's a consequence to it. Yeah. As well as if we tell a lie, there's a consequence. Um, now, you will have to come to see what the decisions and the lies were as well as what the consequence was, but just know that whatever decision that you make in life, there's a consequence to it, whether it be good or bad, there's a consequence. Because consequences, people think of consequences, and sometimes they automatically think that it's something bad. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be. It could be a great, it could be a good consequence, but there is a consequence. And with that, your decisions Sometimes we don't, we miss this a lot of times. We make our decision about us, not really realizing or thinking that my decision, who else is it going to affect? So the play deals with those issues. So you just have to be there. (laughs) And can you tell the listeners how, if you can give them the website or how they can register? Yes. So soapencounter.com, S-O-A-P. 
E N C O U N T E R dot com. There's a registration link there. Um, you can register for the uh, conference itself as well as for the play if you just want to get tickets to the play separately. And of course, if you reach out to me on social media, um, Angela E. Stevenson, then I'll be happy to connect you. Absolutely. I do have um, another question uh, for you, Angela. Um, it's sure. nothing like having a great book. And, you know, we have many, you know, books and lessons um, that are pretty much John Maxwell books. But I would love it if you would share either a great book that you've read or um, a book that you're reading right now. Well, sometimes it's a John Maxwell book. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm reading right now. <laughs> and sometimes you win and sometimes you learn, you know, and it's dealing with um, sometimes the failures um, that we have in life that not every time that you start out to do something that you win, but um, even if you fail that you can learn from it. So it's a great book. I just started reading it, um, of course, by John Maxwell, but it's, it's really helping me so far, you know, and like how you respond to your challenges and things in life that you may have. Um, but sometimes you win, and sometimes the quote, you know, is like sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But even mm -hmm. in losing, you should be able to learn something, you know. So it's really not a loss if you learn something from it. It's still a win. Absolutely. I think that's an absolutely great book. I love all of John Maxwell books. I have a whole library of them, so that is definitely one of my favorites. And so I completely agree with you on that. And so, Angela, I just want to, you know, take the time to say thank you for, you know, sharing your story, um, your journey. I truly believe that, you know, when we start sharing our stories, we inspire, encourage, and empower others to never give up and keep moving yeah. forward despite the hurt and the pain. And I know you've already given, um, you've, I think you may have given your Facebook, your Facebook um, page, but if you could just tell the listeners how, you can stay, how they can stay connected with you and support you, um, that would be great. So, Yes, most definitely. Um, I, get a pen and paper so you can write this down. I have a lot. No. But um, Angela E. <laughs> Stevenson on Facebook. Um, there is um, there's a professional page for Angela E. Stevenson, so reach out to me. I think my personal page is full. It stays full. And then on Instagram, uh, Soap Encounter. You can reach me on Instagram at Soap Encounter. And then I have um, my own website, which is AngelaEStevenson.com. So that gives you a little bit more about myself, what I have going on, as well as um, you, it'll connect you to my John Maxwell site as well. So if you want to request me for a speaking engagement or anything, anything of that nature or coaching, then you can just go to my personal website, AngelaEStevenson.com. And that's Stevenson with the V, S-T-E-V-E-N-S-O-N. Absolutely. Again, it has truly been an honor and a pleasure to have you as a guest on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to give me the opportunity to interview, to interview you today. I wish you nothing but success and blessings as you continue on your journey. Thank you for tuning well, I in. Just, I Go appreciate ahead. you for having me. I'm sorry. I appreciate you for having me. It's been great. It's been fun. <laughs> and I'm Absolutely. just excited about everything that's going on in your life. I know this was about me, but I appreciate everything <laughs> that's um, going on in your life. And just thank God that we connected, that we were able to meet. Absolutely. Yes, I, I have to say the same thing. I think it was absolutely a blessing to be able to connect with you, you know, some months back, and then we stay connected. Um, and, you know, I'm sure we'll stay connected as, you know, the time goes goes on. Um, I truly thank you so much and look forward to, you know, possibly even coming to Atlanta myself to attend the Soap Encounter because it, it sounds like a truly amazing experience. And, you know, that just gives me a, another reason to make a trip down to Atlanta. So, um, oh, of course. <laughs> oh, got to have a reason. And, you know, we're from the same state, so you're in Dayton, right? Yes. Yes, Dayton. Dayton. So, yeah, of course, I'm from Akron. So, yeah, we're we're from the same state, 
Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I think that was another oh, yeah. thing I brought it again. I don't live we're from Ohio. It's like I state. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Just another thing that that connects us. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much again. Um, it has truly been a pleasure. Look forward to, you, you know, seeing so some welcome. of your future future, you know, plays and conferences that'll that'll be coming out in the future. So yes, listeners, most definitely. I, Maybe you can act in one. You can come in and be, yeah. can you can you act, Jerisha? <laughs> <laughs> now listen, let me tell you this. Now, as far as acting, uh, I I don't know about acting, but I do sing. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, if you had a play where you, that you know you guys were singing, that might be a little different. Okay, be okay. Little different. <laughs> All right, I <I'll laughs> remember that. <laughs> Absolutely. I will remember that. <laughs> so thank you so much. And thank you for tuning in to tonight's show with our special guest, Angela. Angela shared some lessons for us to encourage us, to equip us, and empower, empower us. Some of the lessons that she shared is don't put too much weight on what people think. And truly, you have to be true to self. You can't please everybody. If you are interested in being a guest on the show, starting your own radio show, or low-cost advertising, highlighting your book, business, or events, please email envisionedb at empoweronpurpose.com. Please tune in next week where you will hear an amazing story and a journey from another leader, influencer, and motivator. Until next time. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the Empower Hour with Jerisha, where Jerisha speaks with leaders, influencers, and motivators who share their journeys in personal and professional growth, empowerment tips, lessons learned, and keys of success that will empower you to be your best self. Follow Jerisha on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jerisha Moore and visit EmpowerOnPurpose.com. And remember to be intentional and be empowered and have a great day on purpose.